everyone and welcome to this video song frontier video my name is Jay Whitefield and today I thought we would build a computer now the machine that I'm gonna build is um, actually the realization of a nice wee idea that I've actually been uh, flirting about with the, with since um, probably about three or four years ago and you know it was an idea that both Billy Carr aka Road Geek and I you know would float about sometimes all in discussion and that idea was what would be your ideal Pentium 3 build now none of us actually um, ever did realize that dream of the perfect Pentium 3 build I mean, of course, I went off um, onto FreeCycle, said, look, I'm looking for some parts for a Pentium 3 build. I got the Desk Pro Yen, the big one, the one gigahertz one. Loved that machine. Miss it very, very, very dearly. However, unfortunately, I had to get rid of it because um, it was actually... Um, you know, due to the way that, um, in the summer of 2014, and due to the way that I had things set up, um, I was actually realising I was becoming a bit, a wee bit overwhelmed with desktop, uh, desktops, and really what I needed was a tower. So, that's, um, exactly what I did. I got rid of the Desk Pro Yen and got, uh, a Dell Dimension 4100. And uh, funnily enough, so did Billy. He's also had, uh, you know, he's had a couple of Pentium 3 machines, you know. Um, <clears throat> even a Desk Pro. But um, he also now has a Dimension 4100. And they are brilliant, brilliant machines. However, I've quite fancied a Pentium 3 build for in here to KVM with the uh, Compaq. Actually, no. What happened was, I was looking for a 486 machine, as some of you will know, and ended up with the um, Dell Dimension XPS B733R. And that was all well and good, until I decided, hey, I quite fancy looking for another Desk Pro. Um, but I couldn't find one, but I did have a Desk Pro mainboard. So I bought a case, put it in it, realised I would need a compact power supply. And I wasn't entirely sure if the board was still good to go anyway. And it was just, yeah, it was just all kind of up in the air and what have you. So, um, you know, again, chatting with the uh, Road Geek and ML3, you know, I was like, oh, you know, what do I do? They said, well, why not buy a Pentium 3 board? So I thought, well, I guess that could be okay. I could actually build you know, a Pentium 3 system that I wanted. So I got myself an Elite Group board. I uh, forget what model it is. Oh yeah, that was it. Uh, P6-BAT-AP um, um, or A+. Plus. And that was an alright board. But to be honest, it wasn't really what I wanted. It would only take... 66 or 100 megahertz memory and as a result <coughs> all the Pentium 3 processors that I had including this nice little 866 here would actually run at 75% um, because these are 133 processors and it would only, um, it would downclock everything to 100. And there was no way I could change the voltage on these um, cartridge-based processors. That, plus I also had a couple of issues with my NVIDIA GeForce uh, 4 card. So, I decided to try again. And here's what we have. So now we actually come into the meat and tatties of this video. This build. So, let me uh, let me talk you through 
the board that I have for this build. In fact, I'm going to talk you through um, a lot of the components. So this is an Asus CUSL2 board, or, is, or the custard board as I've been calling it um, affectionately. I got this, um, bought this, I think it was uh, last the beginning of last week on eBay. Uh, paid about £30, £40 pounds for it. Um, this will run things with a 133 MHz front side bus as well as 166 which is brilliant <clears throat> because that means that I can actually run um, that's that's good that means I can actually run uh, processors with um, the front side bus clock speed and, and its actual clock and the multiplier at what they were intended to be run at um, so we'll, we'll take a look at uh, the board. So here's, um, this is actually a Socket 370 board. The um, ECS board, it had, a it had a Socket 370 CPU socket in it, but that was really only for Celerons. Um, or it would take the um, slot one Pentium 3, Pentium 2 or Celeron processors. Uh, whereas this one, it's just a Socket 370 and you know, According to the paperwork around this board, it will take Pentium 3 processors. At least it better bloody do anyway. So we have an AGP 4X slot and six, count them, six PCI slots. And um, this one, I always kind of wondered what this was. It sounds, you know, and so was LM03. It was like, what's with that really thin slot? I'm like, I can. <laughs> really, really thin. What what's going on? Is this kinda looks like a it kinda looks basically like a three D model of this board and it's uh, the renderings went a bit ung. And so we've ended up with this really thin PCI slot here. But no, that's exactly what it is. On uh, certain versions of the board, this one not being one of them, um it has one or two CNR slots. This one only has the um the artifacting for those slots, but doesn't actually have the slots themselves. Not a problem. I can live perfectly well without them. So, <clears throat> we also have a floppy controller. We have um, IDE controllers, two of them. So, you um, can put up to four IDE devices on the motherboard. Um, that's before I even think about adding any controller cards. Um, power supply, that's a good thing. And then for the I.O. of this board, we have um, PS2 mouse and keyboard port, two USB 1.1 ports, RS-232 DB9 serial port, IEEE 1284 parallel printer port, uh, D sub 15 VGA port, um, game port or MIDI port, as well as speaker out, line in and mic in. But we're not going to be using these, nor are we going to be using the VGA. And um, we do have a knockout, uh, we do have a header for a second serial port and I've actually bought that, um, I've actually bought one. Because um, I want a couple of serial parts on this build. Because I have a couple of serial devices to connect to it. Which is brilliant. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I know I seem to be doing a lot of talking. Yes, I know I should get into the video. But, um, you know, I thought we'd uh, take some time to actually sit and talk about the components for a wee bit. So if I'm not using the onboard sound and graphics, what am I going to use? Well, this is uh, kind of my dream custom build. I've realised um, that that's what it is. Um, not sure it will take a Trelaton processor, actually. Because um, that was kind of part of the dream custom build idea. Something like a really fast 1.3 or 1.4. But um, Elmo3 quite wisely said, well, I better be running Windows 2000 on there because, um, you know, I mean, Windows 98, I mean, it's... 
really doesn't make sense to run Windows 98 on a Trellatin processor. I mean, these things are faster than early Pentium 4s. So, um, I know I said I was going to talk about sound, uh, sound and video, but um, actually, this board did come with a Pentium 3 processor. Here it is. Uh, clocked at 933 MHz. And it came with this cooler, which is good because I kind of need a, a more uh, beefy one than the one I have. Um, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm, and I'm perfectly sure that it's healthy to have an imprint of the CPU at the bottom of the heatsink. I'm, I'm sure that is perfectly fine. Not. Uh, but, well, what can you do? Hopefully it'll work. Just got to believe. But what I'm actually going to use in this machine is this, a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3, which is exactly the kind of CPU that the uh, Desk Pro EN had in it. So, I guess while we've got the motherboard out, I suppose I could um, go ahead and install this. So, in order to do that, I need to uh, open up the... Uh, socket latch, match up uh, the uh, notches on the CPU with those on the actual socket and what you want to do here is carefully kind of push the processor in, you don't necessarily want to force it, it will just kind of drop in there and then once it has done lock it in place using the latch. There we go. Now it has a processor installed. One gigahertz. Nice. So. There you have it. Now. Expansion. Audio. Video. Anything else. What do I plan to plug into this board? Let's start off with the graphics, shall we? I quite fancy, and I know I'm going to... I know I'm going to get a bug of comments for this. Oh, you're using the wrong card. But... You know what, I'm using it anyway. Um, just a wee um, note, folks. Uh, if you don't like any of the components that I'm using in this, bot, in this build, you think that um, certain parts of the build um, are not specified well enough, um, please feel free to get me the required parts, um, because I'm certainly not going to get them, um, because this is my build. <laughs> but, you know, if you want to donate parts to the channel, then, you know, I am okay. Anyway, uh, the card that we're going to use in this build is an NVIDIA GeForce 4 MX440. Now, I kind of like this card. I know it's only an MX, but this was the first ever proper graphics card I ever owned. Or, uh, not, not this particular one, uh, but uh, it was an MX440 that um, was the first proper uh, dedicated graphics card I ever owned. It was a PCI version. And it slotted into the 2001 custom belt for as part of my Christmas box in 2003. What happened to my voice? 2003. Maybe I need to tea. Two thousand and three. There we go. <laughs> I feel much better now. Anyway. So, um, I like this card. I think it's, um, okay, it's a bit newer than the build, but um, I think uh, the two go very, very well together. Like two lovers embraced in the beautiful dance, which is the Tango Denim Work Day. Okay, so sound. Again, it's a dream build. Do I want to be using uh, onboard audio? How about no? Instead, what I'm going to be using is this Oriel Vortex 2 sound card. Uh, why am I going to be using this instead of a Creative Labs um, Sound Blaster Live? Well, because these just have better MIDI, okay? <laughs> they just do! <laughs> Good cards. You know, I, I did use one in the Desk Pro EN, but I've been using uh, Creative Labs ones for a while, and you know, I've, got, I've you know, got these cards, and they're just feeling a wee bit forlorn so I just I'm like yeah I really want to use one of the vortexes so 
that's exactly what's going to happen. We're not quite done though. <clears throat> I have another card I wish to uh, install in this system. Um, this is a some sort of 3Com Ethernet card. Uh, the drivers for which are built into Windows 98 itself. So it means I don't even need to burn a CD with the drivers on or get a USB, get the drivers on a USB pen, anything like that for this motherboard or any other component in the system. All I need to do is just log on to the network and grab the files off of my server. So uh, yeah, network connectivity, quite important in these older builds, you know, for software and drivers, you know, when you don't want to be wasting uh, CDs or DVDs for that matter. And, you know, in case anyone wanted to ever come around and have a game or something, you know, you could, uh, could quite easily do that. Connect a laptop up and within moments be playing Unreal Tournament 98 or Grand Theft Auto or anything like that. Okay, well, I think I've rambled on long enough. Well, nearly. I've, ram I've rambled on long enough to talk about everything but the memory, but now it's time to talk about the memory. So here's 256 megs of the stuff. And that'll go in. <coughs> and, um, you know, I might even add another 256. Why? Because why the hell not? <laughs> So I think uh, the best thing I can do now is actually mount the CPU cooler to the board and then uh, we'll think about getting in the case. So I think I'm going to end it there for this week. Um, this part has gone on a lot longer than expected. Um, so join me next week when we will start to build the machine into the case that I have chosen and then the week after when we will actually install windows on the new machine thank you for watching this video and please feel free to follow subscribe and like and i will see you all hopefully next week Cheerio.